recording. Yes. No. Find unit normal vector by normal vector. They do not mention tangent because tangent is required to find before these two. So we are going to find in this example T N and B. And this is the famous trio that represents surfaces and curves in 3D. I will take it away. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too dangerous. <laughs> anyway, so these three vectors, we just learned them. Tangent vector is the one that is kissing the curve. That's why they call it oscillator vector, because osculus means kiss. So it's the one that touches the curve at one point. The normal vector is perpendicular to tangent, that is n. And then binormal is found as the cross product of the two vectors t and n. And cross product, if you remember, perpendicular to other two. So all of these are perpendicular to each other. That makes sense. Just in time. Good job. And um, <laughs> Yeah, but someone else did remind me to record, which Wait, is good. I, I put it on the board. <laughs> oh, you did? Where? Yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. That's such a small <laughs> solution. So we need to find T, N, and B. So to find T, now this is exactly what you'll be on it. You will you'll see it on a test. You need to have good. Uh, you need to come down, inhale, exhale, and then tell yourself what is T. How to find T? Formulas. Formulas, formulas, more formulas. You need to remember them all. How to find T? Who knows? So I will count you to remember that tangent is synonym of the derivative, right? I will say that you can count those one place, and I will say that you might count those one place. Tangent means differentiate. So your first hint will be start differentiating the function you have, but then you remember that we don't care about the size of it. That is why we are making a unit tangent vector. So that's why we're dividing by the size of the derivative. So it's r prime over size of r prime. Remember that. So formula number one, you're good with this, you remember it, you feel satisfied, start differentiating. I would do it in two steps, but at least we know how to start. So let's find r prime. R prime of t, nothing super crazy. You look at your function and differentiate each component. Cosine gives me a minus sign. Sine gives me a cosine. T gives me one. Don't confuse with integration. No plus c, it's a derivative. I already can see where people can mess up. Now, we are going to find the size of this vector to normalize t. What is the size? You know it's a square root, and you will get used to that. If you see sine and cosine, regardless of the sign of them, square plus square gives you one. So it's one plus one. Do you all see that? Sine square plus cosine square plus one square. So the faster you do it, the better. The size is square root of two. That's literally the size of that vector. Thus, this gives me t, a tangent vector. They call it unit tangent vector, but actually, we assume that it is that, it's going to be minus sine t, cosine t, and one, all over square root of two. You can emerge, emerge, submerge, uh, infuse, distribute one over square root of two inside of the vector, but you don't have to. That is fine looking thing. So we did the first one, maybe put it in the box, we need it. We were not asked to find that, but we need it for the step two and three. Step two is to find normal vector. And then step three is to find binormal vector, which is a cross product of T and N. And cross product is the matrix, if you remember. N is derivative, so formula for N. Maybe it's a little bit hard to memorize, but maybe you should see it like this. If t, t was a derivative of the original r, r is distance, t is velocity, n is acceleration. If you remember this, it will help you on the exam. Because formula for n is t prime over t prime. So distance, 
tangent as always is something about speed velocity and n normal vector is acceleration. If you see it this way, it actually helps you to memorize thousands of formulas we give to you. Derivative of t, so it's basically second derivative over the size of that second derivative. So second formula, you see how we're going to be grading all of this on a test. This is points by points. You remember, you don't remember, you will see. So again, I will do it step by step. Not enough space. Differentiate the previous function. Luckily, hopefully you did not mess up in the previous step because <laughs> that will be upsetting. T prime, derivative of the previous one. So I'm looking at on here. And I don't like how it looks like. So I will take 1 over square root of 2 outside. And then I will differentiate the vector. Just easier. So 1 over square root of 2 stays. And then derivative will be derivative of minus sine gives me back cosine, but with minus. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. And derivative of 1 is 0. We are learning this today in my other calculus one class. Now we are dividing by the size. Actually, we could do it in one step. No, actually, it's better to bring it into two steps. Who, who has the alarm so late? <laughs> it's time to wake up. A little bit too late. <laughs> one over square root of two times a square root. Again, you see, minus plus sign doesn't matter because negative sign get killed by the square root. Uh, not killed. Okay, eliminated. <laughs> Elim no violence in the classroom. I can just see Terminator coming in shooting. Terminated by the square. <laughs> sine squared plus cosine squared gives you 1 plus 0. So it's basically the same thing. 1 over square root of 2. Thus, uh, n will be what is going to be we're kind of canceling out. It's very interesting. So the original one was this. 1 over square root of 2. And the vector minus cosine t. And the vector minus sine t. And 0. And then we're dividing by 1 over square root of 2. So they just cancel out, actually. So n. I just need to move everything. N doesn't have a square root of 2 in front of it at all. Thus, thus, N of T is just minus cosine T minus sine T. And you see it's even two-dimensional. The third coordinate is 0. Put it in the box. You will need it right now. Finally, the last one is B. It might freak you out on the exam, but you should just remember that B was created in the weirdest way. B takes two previous vectors and finds uh, the cross product. And that is the matrix. Cross product is the determinant of the matrix. I, J, K. What is T? Let's go back and see my box. Uh, you can kick out 1 over square root of 2, to be honest. That is the properties of the matrix. But if, if it scares you, you can keep it in every place. So which one do you prefer? I'm not sure. Let's kick it out. Yeah. 1 over square root of 2. I'm talking about this one. This one. Then the matrix I, J, K. Then what was T? I'm looking at over here. T minus sine T cosine t and 1 and then we found n here it is minus cosine t minus sine t and 0 and now should i show you the process or you know how to do it i will show you then the process is very fast well, okay, I'm not supposed to like say it's simple or fast, but the more you do it, the faster it gets. That definitely is the case. So factoring out means it will be outside. Now I is multiplied by cross of these two with negative sign. Cosine times zero is zero minus 
minus sine. So it's plus sine t, like so. Do you see what I'm doing? Minus, because the second coordinate here is minus, like so, plus, minus, minus. So it's minus j is multiplied. Imagine how it's bombarding these two. And now I just need to look at whatever is left. Minus sine times 0 is 0. Minus, minus cosine gives you plus cosine t. Finally, plus k. K is destroying everything to the left and down. So I have the most complicated one. Minus sine times minus sine is just sine squared. Minus, open parenthesis in your mind, minus cosine times plus cosine is minus cosine squared. Minus times minus gives you plus. Be very careful with that because or else it will be harder if you don't see that. And now you just simplify. Can we leave this as, as the answer on the exam? Uh, if it's multiple choice, then you have to choose it from the list. So you have to simplify. If it's not, I probably will ask you to simplify because it's easier to grade. If you want me to grade in one day, you better simplify. I'm okay with it's, two days. it's fair. Uh, I sine t minus j cosine t plus k. What had happened with this part? One, it's one. So the coordinates, if you want to break it into coordinates, because b is a vector, if you remember, the coordinates will be 1 over square root of 2 sine t, comma, minus 1 over square root of 2 cosine t, comma, uh, and just 1 over square root of 2. How do I know? Because each component corresponds to i, j, k. And this is the answer. So we found all three vectors, T and B. They have lots of lots of applications in physics. That is why we're teaching them so hard. This is actually important to find uh, T and B. We are going to put it on the next one and probably on the final. So you better know this code. And you see it's a good written problem. A, B, C, three vectors. I'm checking them. You did good. 100% points. And each mistake takes a point off. And this one's probably going to be written. Right? Probably it's going to be written, yeah. So again, what we just did, we found this famous trio. Go. Yeah. We found this trio. And it's exactly we were working on the uh, spiral. With sine, cosine, and some kind of screw over there. So that's what we found. This trio is this kind of behavior. The tangent one is closest to the curve. The perpendicular one, but in the same plane, is um, normal vector, and sticking out is binormal. Pretty cool idea. Who is sneezing? No coughing. Yes. Um, for your homework, I have to tell you that you can actually cheat in your homework. <laughs> you can? How? You Teach us. You and use Wolfram Alpha? You have to tell us. Did you see that? What I did? I just put everything on Wolfram Alpha. And then it gave me the answer. <laughs> it looks different. So I will keep this link for you in the notes. And then that will speed up your homework. But you need to be fast and test. So if you do this, it terminates like five, ten times. And you're confident you're not to know what to do. You can kind of stop doing it. You can can we use Wolfram No. <laughs> every student who asks me, if I get one dollar for every student who asks me this question, you would let us? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would. I would be already thirty-five dollars rich. No, she done the homework and the quizzes. Quizzes, so. You not literally just said we could use Wolfram Alpha. Not quizzes. You have to show your work. Our take-home quizzes. Yeah. We actually do. If you sign into Wolfram Alpha with your ASU and stuff, yeah. you can do all the steps. You have pro account from ASU for free. Oh, Wolfram wow. Alpha shows you steps. That's true. That's new for my years. I'm a... You did that last semester. Yeah, I did mention last semester, but I'm afraid to mention it because you, you guys abuse it a little bit too much. Oh, yeah, we definitely abuse it. Yeah. So, 
Let's complete finally 10.9. No, it was the end of 10.8. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, motion in space. This class today will be all about physics. So, if you like physics, no. Oops. I'm low key debating to my major. Me too. Okay, so we'll be asking these people for help. I mean, there should be some people who are good at physics. <laughs> okay, let's This is exactly what the last chapter is talking about, application and physics. Amazing, interesting and beautiful, but uh, complicated. <laughs> so that's why it's not my favorite. This is important. Suppose a particle moves through space so that its position vector at time t is r of t. We know that. The picture ignored for now. I will show you how to draw it. Then write down this formula. This formula represents uh, the particle moving along the curve. So for small values of h, remember we did it in calculus 1. They're making references to calculus 1 class. I was literally teaching this on Wednesday for my calculus 1 class. The difference in output or a difference in input rise over run. You remember it from calculus 1 class with the h being so different. That's how we derive the first derivative. So uh, what? So that's 10.9. The magnitude measures the size of the displacement vector per unit time. So we, we need to learn what does it mean to have a displacement vector. This picture, they think it's obvious, and I was like, that is not obvious at all. So let me explain people what it is. Oh yeah, so let me show you. Draw the x, y, z, and then draw a curve first. Like so. Now, when you finish drawing the curve, you want to have a pointing vector. Remember, I, I took laser, and I was like, look at this fly. And using the laser, I'm showing you how where the fly is flying, pointing at the fly. And when I finish pointing where the fly is flying, this is how I'm describing the path or displacement of the fly. This is what R of T is doing. It starts from the center, so I've, I'm fixed. I'm not walking around. And then I'm pointing with my laser at the uh, fly path. This is R of T. R of T fixes point P. Now I can find the speed of the fly. How? Speed or tangent is synonym of derivative. I'm taking derivative and that gives me this kissing vector, which is R prime. We just found it in the previous example. That gives me the steepness of the curve. So I can see how fast the fly is flying right now. But what if I decide to find a different point? I will wait a little bit longer. So I will add small h to my time. Again, as you can see, we have four dimensions here. x, y, and z. And time is four dimensions. So I'm like, I'm looking at my watch and I'm like, you know, let's find the speed of the fly at five seconds. And I'm like, maybe five plus two, something small, or five plus 0 0.5. With a small increment, a small change. Small steps. This is how we're defining calculus one derivative. Small change. Now I'm pointing to a different location and creating point Q. So this is a secant line in calculus one. In calculus three, the secant line that cuts through secant means secating, secating means cutting through. Cuts through gives you every trade of change if you remember it from calculus one class. And this is how we start defining vector displacement. So that's the idea. Now, this is how to make it perfect, how to create a velocity vector. 
I want this step size to be as small as possible, right? This is how we teach in Calculus 1. Let's make the smallest, smallest change. Because when I want to shrink this Q towards P, at some point they will match. When they match, secant line, secant in this case vector, becomes tangent vector. The vector one gives the average velocity. And I don't want an average speed of the fly. I want to have instantaneous speed of the fly over the time interval of length h. If you take the limit and make the interval go to zero, this gives you r prime. This is how r prime is defined. Let's call it velocity vector. Velocity vector. This is how we're defining velocity. Thus, the velocity vector is also a tangent vector and points in the direction of the tangent line. So the speed is tangent. It exactly matches calculus one material. The speed, though, is not the same as velocity. I was trying to explain it in calculus one class, but I knew we we're going to dive deeper in this in physics classes in calculus three. Velocity and speed is not the same thing. One it's also like distance and displacement. Displacement. Distance from me to that table is fixed. But displacement is I'm walking there and I'm changing my mind and walking halfway back. Displacement is only this part. So how I did I displace myself? Same with velocity and speed. Speed of the particle is a magnitude of the velocity. So velocity can be positive or negative. Positive speed or negative speed, but speed speed gives you a number, 9 miles per hour. It's a positive number. How come? Because it's a magnitude of V. This is appropriate because when you take the magnitude of V, you actually take the magnitude of R prime, which is derivative of the curve with respect to T, and that is the rate of change of distance with respect to time. As in the case of one-dimensional motion, there is acceleration. How to figure out acceleration? Remember this. Acceleration is derivative of velocity. So A equals V prime and V prime equals R prime prime. So differentiate R gives you velocity. Differentiate V gives you acceleration. Integrate A gives you velocity back and integrate V gives you R. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense for now? What happens when you huh? take the derivative of an A? Yeah, remember, we, we, I actually do have, he has a question what, takes you to, what happens if you take derivative of uh, A? And I was substituting this class on Wednesday, and I did answer this question. Velocity acceleration, if you differentiate, you get John, Jones. Jones? Jerk. Then if you differentiate four times, you get jerk. Then you get crackle. What is the speed of crackle? Pop. <laughs> what is the speed of pop? Log. That is physics. Uh, <laughs> so I made a joke. I made a joke before they left. And then and lock it. So if I crack a yeah. pop and lock, do I just become yeah. super fast? It's like a cheat code in a game of super speed. So now you know. Some notes. E velocity vector. Let's see. Some notes. The velocity vector is also tangent vector and points towards the direction of the motion. I already mentioned that. Acceleration vector points generally towards the direction of the curve is bending. So if the first one is what I said, tangent kind of matches with velocity. Velocity points in the same way as direction motion, uh, as tangent. But acceleration, where does acceleration even point? It points where the curve is bending. Because acceleration is depends on how fast the speed is changing. That's interesting. If the curve is like that, tangent will be showing up. Uh, speed is increasing. Acceleration will be a little bit lower and saying this is where the curve is bending. That's a pretty cool idea. Example. This is a good exam question. Find acceleration from the given... Uh, uh, let's see. If the given acceleration, find the R. So... Let's do that. 
if we give you acceleration, how to find R? Just using this diagram I just showed you here. If I give you this, you have to go this direction. Integrate, integrate. The problem is every time you integrate, you get what? The stupid plus t part. <laughs> because uh, there's a family of functions, if you remember. Differentiation is unique, but integration is not unique. When you integrate, you get families of functions which are shifted up and down plus by c, positive or negative. To fix one function from the whole family, this is how we're teaching it when we describe integration, integral gives you this, 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 all these parabolas. How to find one unique parabola? The point will be giving you the this you don't understand? Okay. Any one point will give you the correct one. So, correct, we need to integrate first a to find v. v is 0, 2, and 3. I did not even give you any variables there, just numbers. So, let's integrate a. Also, remember, those are all vectors. Let's integrate a, and that means nobody people people don't usually write the second line, but I wanted you to know that this is how you do it. Integral of each component. What gives you integral of zero? What? C T. What is the answer? <laughs> it is just a constant, right? You should ask yourself derivative of what gave me zero constant. Which way you want to call it? You can call it C1, C2, C3. Just don't make them the same. Or A, B, and C. Let's call it A, B, and C. It's also popular. A. So just a constant. What gave you 2 when you differentiate that? 2T two two and then plus one more uh, C2 or B. And then 3T three, three plus a constant. Let's call it C. So now you have three constants to find. A. B and C. We don't know them. How to find them? This is what's called IVP. Who remembers what it means? Initial problem. problem. Exactly. Good job. Initial value problem. That is differential equation class. If you take it n capitals 2 and capitals 1, we'll be teaching you initial value problem. It's when something is given with initial conditions. That's what we call initial values. Initial values are given for the velocity and position. So it says velocity for find the position r, given that initially the particle is at the location that's r, 1, 0, minus 1, and moves with the given velocity. That is what we call v sub 0. Is that first thing a point? That a, a good question. Usually we give you initial value point. But since we're working in the vector space, that's initial value vector. Very good point. But you can always remember that vector is this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Magic outside of Hogwarts. Look at this. <laughs> and then point is over here. So technically speaking, it's both. If you put parentheses, it's a point. If you put brackets, it's the whole thing. So they're gonna. this is what we call v sub 0 or v at 0. It's not always 0, by the way. Sometimes. When I like to give an example with bacteria, when you have a pantry dish and you have three bacteria there, so the initial value will be three, actually. So at, a, at time five minutes, we have three bacteria. But it's pretty common to have time zero at the original moment. So what should I do now? Who knows? Solve. No, solve, like what solve? Solve for A, B, D. I'm plugging zero, and then I'm solving. Right? I'm plugging t equals 0 because it's exactly what they gave me. They say at 0 you should have 1, 1, 2. But at 0 instead of 1, 1, 2 I have a, b, and c. How do I have it? Because 0 plus b and 0 plus c. But I should have 1, 1, 2. This part is given. And now you can solve. So don't skip that thing. And luckily, they just matched it. It's not always the case. A is 1. B is 1. C is 2. It's just a coincidence that they matched. And now I can complete the vector function. V now. Thus, V of T is A is 1. 2T plus B is 1. 
3t plus c is 2. I found these. And this is how you solve initial value problem, put it in the box, we need it. This is also a very nice written problem on a test. We always give it in Calculus 1 class, and usually we give it on the final exam. So it's time to give it again in Calculus 3. Now, what do we do now? Integrate. Integrate one more time. Yeah. So step one is done. Step two, we are looking for this. So we need to do one more integration. And that is why they gave us two initial values. Second initial value is r at zero. So we will be using that. Since we never use it, it's kind of a hint that you have to keep going. r of t is the integral of v of t. And I will not be writing so many details anymore. Let's just integrate right away. Integral of 1 is t, not 1, t, plus, which one would you want to call it? Let's do d. I like d. 2t plus 1 gives you what? Plus what? E. E, thank you. 3t plus 2? 3t squared divided by 2. Q. Q, yeah. No, first plus 2t plus? Q. Q? Yeah. Okay, why not? <laughs> yes. Q. All agree? <laughs> constant to find, constant to find, constant to find. You can call it C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, whatever you want. Just don't call it T, right? Just don't call it T, it's reserved. Don't call it V, R, obviously. Don't call it D also, that sounds very good. Small D. All capitals, that's also reserved. Capitals. <coughs> now, uh, how to find them? Repeat the process. I'm plugging zero, and that gives me D, E, Q. Again, the coincidence that everything got canceled out, that's not always the case. Remember that. Sometimes we have exponential functions. E at zero is one. So it messes everything up. Or cosine at zero is not zero. So you have to be careful. But it told me that it should be one zero minus one. So this should be one zero minus one uh, given. So now we solve D is one, E is zero, Q is minus one. And we can complete the function r. And this is what we were asked to find. r is t plus 1. t squared plus t plus 0. And then 3, 3t three squared over 2 plus 2t two minus 1. And this is the answer. So imagine this is a very nice exam question. I'm checking the last answer. If that one is not matching, you made a mistake, so I have to go back, find where that you make a mistake, and take points off. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. Does this problem look familiar to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, wasn't it on the quiz on Wednesday? It wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> so I just noticed yesterday that that problem was actually from this class. And it looked very simple, so I did not uh, hesitate to put it on the quiz. But see, it feels reading, it's from 10.9. Who are you? Does it remember that? It's a simple problem. So, very simple, did not do the last the problem like this. Do you need more time for tonight or not? Okay. We can all spread the answer around. Actually, I agree. Is the deadline tonight? Oh, you're ready. No, I wonder if I got it right first. So should I, let's let's vote. Uh, who wants to increase the deadline for the quiz in tonight? Raise your hand. Wait, wait, I should try to. I'm sorry, sir. Democracy! Woo! Okay, so if you did this problem, I think it's kind of fair because if you did this problem, you actually can't think about it. You saw the problem from the future chapter. So you did put extra effort. You deserve extra credit. But, but you will not be punished if you did not do it. So the, 
Jacob, Jacob. So the total will decrease. The quiz will be cheaper now. If you did not do it, you will not get punished. That's fine. But it looked kind of doable, so like yeah, it looked kind of doable. I'm like, eh, looked fine to me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. So, more physics. No. More physics. No. <laughs> uh, the using this Newton's second law of motion, you can also find the force acting on the object. Oh, this is going to be nice. I already saw this. I already gave you a couple. M equals M times H. Concentrate. The vector version of this law states that E at any time T a force M acts at the force on an object of a mass M, M is a given mass, how heavy you are, producing an acceleration, A is the acceleration. Then there's a formula F of T equals M times acceleration A. This is what is going to the exam. I already saw it there. So again, A is acceleration. If we ask you to find ask you to find force, we ask you to remember the formula. Force is m times a. We give you m, but to find a, you need to differentiate twice the given distance, right? R. So a is r prime prime. Remember that. Like this, where a is r prime prime. Okay, baby Yoda, and then uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Example. You see, today I gave you lots of examples, and the last example will be from your homework, so let's hurry up. Suppose a particle has mass 4, and this is good, good exam problem, honestly. Like, just this is very good already. It's fast, and uh, it's straightforward. R is given. We ask you to find F and the magnitude of F. What should you do? Basically, you need to find R prime prime. And then F will be that there's, this is acceleration, right? R prime prime. Then F will be M. M is given, that is 4 times acceleration. And then you find magnitude of that. S done. Oh, so many done. Physical interpretation. The particle is moving on a circle because 3 cosine times and 3 sine is a circle. With the radius 3. And the um, we have angular speed, which I will explain you what it means. 2. This 2 is angular speed. And we need to find the force acting towards the center. Let's do that. Solution. Your job is to remember the formula really fast. M times A. But A is second derivative of R. And this is where the progress starts. The process of progress starts. Let's find two derivatives really fast. So R prime is, look at the function. 3 cosine 2t, chain rule. 3 times 2 is 6. Cosine gives me minus sine of 2t. 2 pops out, so it gives you 6. Comma, 3 times 2 is 6. Cosine of 2t. One vector is done. You see, you already got points. What this vector is called? V. That's the velocity. It doesn't really matter in this case because we just need to find second derivative. Repeat the process. 6 times 2 minus 12 change to cosine of 2t. Two, 2 times 6 is 12, but now it's minus because it's sine of 2t. What this is called acceleration, and this is what we need. Too fast or you're fine? Perfect. Perfect. Nice. Oh, that's so rare. Someone says that. <laughs> Very satisfying. I wish you were my physics professor. I might actually learn. Yeah. F equals m times a. So m is given 4. It was given. And then a, we just found it. So you just multiply by 4 everything you just found. So what's your problem here? Minus 12 cosine. This should be a very nice exam problem. I think everyone will do it just fine. This is not integration, it's differentiation. Just don't lose your chain rule pieces. We found f. This is almost full credit. And then they ask us to find absolute value of f, the magnitude. That is a little bit annoying because you will have to work with the square root, the square root, and then 4 times negative 12 is uh, negative 48. Uh, but everything is squared, remember, squared, cosine squared. You can factor it out, remember? 
So it will be sine squared 2t, 2t. I don't even care what's inside because I know it's going to go to 1. That's typical result. This is 1. So the answer is a square root of 48 squared. So that's 48. So the size of this vector pointing towards the center is 48. Done. So the answer is, I will put it in the box. This is the second answer. And the first answer that is not the box is this. And that is not the <laughs> box either. So would you say... Um if you get the, the first answer, you get half credit, you get the second answer. I don't know. That's a kind of uh, yeah. extra question. It's not interesting. Can I just, can I see the yes. Question? What are the units of 48? Is it Newton? Oh, that's a very good question. It is uh, Newton's, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, Who is going in physics? What's the unit? I have a B in Newton's. physics. I think it's an A. Newton's, right? Good job. Oh, I thought you said this hate physics. That's not really my answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I gave you the whole link to Wikipedia that answers the question, what is angular velocity? I don't plan to test on this, but angular velocity is uh, defined by omega. You don't have to write this down. And this is the velocity that has angles, which is pretty cool. There's also angular f velocity called frequency. They have formulas, and I like these pictures. This is what angular velocity is. Again, if you... Oh, this is centripetal force, right? Yeah, um, it work. If you're a physicist or engineer, you're supposed to feel excited about this. So please go and read it by yourself. Woo! Because Kepler is about vectors and mass, so I will push that more. But this is your thing. You should be excited about this. So I will keep it in the notes. Yeah, I'll keep it in the notes. And you read it through. Yeah, I'll keep it in the notes. I will keep it in the notes and you read it through. Because it is pretty cool and it has lots of cool animations. If you ever be building things as the engineer, this is what you will be doing, right? This is centripetal force, which is, as you can see, perpendicular to the tangent. I'm an art major now. <laughs> and so on. Last uh, five minutes, I will show you homework examples, so just a second. Look at this. How cool is that? The gravitational forces pointing down, but also you see over the center. That's your roller coasters. This is pretty cool. One more example, just a second. Oh, that's not centripetal force. That's more just up and down. Obviously. Yeah, that's true. So, projectiles. Projectiles is an object that is cast, fired, flung, haven't heard, pitched, tossed, or thrown. So, this is interesting. Look at that. The projection. Of the fountain. So this is parabola. Are you guys just second? This is parabola, but the projection is a line. How cool is that? I still have five minutes. <laughs> Don't go. This is the problem from your homework. This is a hard problem from your homework. So I wanted to show it to you. The body of the mass is 10 kilograms. First of all, yay to kilograms. Uh, and it moves in, in counterclockwise, counterclockwise, right? Direction. Circle pass of the radius five, making one revolution every nine seconds. Compute the centri cent how do you say this? Centripetal. Centripetal. Uh, centripetal force acting on the body and the magnitude of that. So the formula will tell you very interesting solution. Nobody call it centripetal force, to be honest. Uh, they say Russian. What do they call? I did not really like how they mentioned here. It actually should be called centripetal force or displacement. But it's fine. Let's keep it force to be consistent with homework. Force is. So if it is a circle, then the total is 2 pi of the revolution. And then the circle is made every 9 seconds. So you divide by 9. So that is important to understand. So from 2 pi, we're dividing into 9 pieces because every 9 seconds it happens. Now, then R of t, that is what they want us to find. The centripetal force will be the radius matters because if you're roller coasting on a big circle, it's not the same as in a small. So 5 matters, direction matters. 5 is the radius. Remember, the first coordinate is always cosine. 2 pi over 9, that is my 
force. I would even call it here. There was an example with the earth. Yeah. Angular velocity spin. Here, consider the earth rotates on the axis every 24 hours. The angular velocity omega is 24 over 2 pi over 24 radians over hours. So for you to understand, in this case, it was radians over seconds. That's the idea. So we're putting it inside of the cosine, but now it's a function depends on time. So times t, comma, again, 5 sine of 2 pi over 9 t, and that is my r. But now they want us to find the centripetal force, which is, excel which is f. So f is m times a. They gave us how heavy the object is. So if you are 300 pounds, that will be different than 100 pounds, right? Uh, when you are on the roller coaster. So you need to find a, just like we found before, it's going to be mass times second derivative of the r you just found. So find a second derivative, multiply by m, and then find the magnitude of f. And it's again the square root and so on. 200 over 81 pi squared. So these things, this is probably the minimum physics I will require. I, I will be required to put on a test, so you should know that. You should know these guys. Does that make sense? What? Thank you. Uh, 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 u